Um, I'm trying to think back to yesterday. It was good practice today. Or yesterday was uh, a lot of dinged, dinged up, beat up guys. Um, probably not as physical a Monday as we'd like, but um, we had high tempo, good speed out there today. Um, good looks from the scout teams. I appreciated the way the, the scout teams worked and looked. Um, but it was good. I mean, I thought uh, it was spirited. It was nice and cool out there. So they, they got a good football team. They're hard to simulate. That's the hardest thing is, is simulating what they do, especially their uh, their offense and their, their defense, vertical strike, knockback. They're very different in terms of how they play. Just wondering how much right now that uh, that Branson's able to do, how much Anthony Evans able to do. I noticed that Gabe Harris did not play good. You see all the action taken on him. Yeah, Gabe's good. Um, hoping to get some more snaps out of Gabe. He's playing. I think he started on some special teams. Um, and then uh, Branson is back out with us, uh, moving around, running on the bike in pads. Uh, he's. I don't want to say he's a week away. I, I don't honestly know, but uh, he's getting closer. Um, and then Anthony Evans is, is he's hitting some good speeds. He's running. He feels good, um, but we're being real careful with it. So it's uh, one of those deals that we hope we can get him back. Yeah, Coach, it's obviously been well documented that you guys use crowd noise when you go on the road, artificial crowd noise here. I'm curious with a team like Tennessee that plays with particularly with the pace, but also the space. You guys ever simulate the home crowd noise for the defense to be able to communicate quickly? Yeah, we do that every week. We have to because it's so loud. I think most teams do because um, it's, it's frustrating because the offense doesn't really want to deal with it on the uh, the home games. But we, we go against each other, so we have to – we just keep crowd noise pumped in different periods every day because we, our offense is going to get it and our defense is going to get it. And, and communi communication on defense has changed so much since the uh, – the advent of all these offenses with motions and shifts, so you can't you can't practice football without communicating on defense. So we do crank it in. It seems like Daniel Harris has played more snaps for you guys the last couple of weeks, higher percentage of snaps. Uh, what has he done to earn more playing time? What have you seen from him in the last two games? Yeah, he's practiced better. You know, we had a we had a long meeting, uh, and I don't remember what game it was. Can't remember the order of those games, um, but. We, we had a long meeting with him and, and told him that we needed to see him practice better. And it was the off week where he really like stepped up. He um, he had really good practices. He competed. Uh, he gave great effort. He tackled better. Um, he, he earned it what he did. So he's he's played more because of the way he's practiced. Kirby, what did you see from Smile in his first game back and just how big was getting him back on the field? Yeah, it was good for the confidence of the other guys, and I think the depth of our other guys. You know, we were basically playing three, I guess, and a half inside backers between Jalen, CJ, and Raylan, and then um, and then I'm sitting Chris Carter's playing some. So now kicking him in allows number one Jalen maybe to be fresher and play on the edge a little more. Um, and, and and you know, I, we weren't even sure we were going to get Smile back for. Uh, for that game, he, he wanted to play. He felt good. He did not practice a lot last week, but the plan was for him to get back practicing this week, and uh, he's done that. And he's he's embraced the leadership role of, of that room. Coach, after we spoke to you yesterday, Jake Polk went on Twitter and made an apology to everybody. It, has he had a chance to maybe speak to the team about that? And so, kind of how did that go? Yeah, you know, I don't like to comment on the internal stuff going on inside. He did talk to the team, did a great job. You know, I'll say I should not have called the kid an idiot. That was a mistake by me, but I uh, I appreciate Jake. He is a great kid. He works really hard. Um, he's a team player. I think he knows it was a emotional mistake, and uh, he told the team that. So I uh, appreciate the way he handled it. Kirby, I guess when you go uh, at the game injured uh, last week for Tennessee, and uh, how do you approach it knowing you know, whether he's going to play or not, and, and what do you know about Gaston Moore? Yeah, that's a dilemma. You know, we don't we don't know a lot. But I'm talking about about his injury. Like we don't you know we don't really know what's going on there. It's hard to figure. We we do have because they had those games early in the year where they beat teams so bad. You know, Gaston got to play it quite a bit. 
Uh, then we obviously have the game that he played in. Um, but that, that kind of happened in the Florida game because I didn't know a lot about the kid that came in in the Florida game. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, in this situation, we don't we don't know. So there is a prep there. And, and Nico's such a high-level athlete. And some of the runs he's made, I, I you know, I knew I knew the kid was a great thrower, but I didn't know he was this kind of athlete and hitting the speeds he's hitting GPS wise and you know he made a run on Alabama that was really elite. So um, just recognizing his skill set is is uh, is a lot, and then trying to prepare for kind of two guys, you know, because philosophically I don't I don't know how they'll approach it with um, with the other quarterback. Yes, Kirby, uh, home games that are at night. How stark a difference is that from a regular home game, and, and how much harder is it playing a road game at night versus a regular road game? Yeah, I don't know that it's the night that makes a huge difference. I mean, I know Lane made the comments he made about the the, the, the one our game to be at night, and I, I, you know, I mean, given the alternative, I, I would take either one, um, the three thirty or the night, um, but. I think some places it has a great impact. I, I don't think, I think back to the year that we had the great home games. There was a, I think Arkansas, and then I mean, it was one of the loudest I've ever been a part of. And then there were some 330 games. Uh, you know, I think back to the Notre Dame game at night. And I think the last time we played Tennessee at home, it was not, it was 330, right? So how can I say that a night game is any better than that 330 Tennessee game? You know what I mean? Like I don't, I just think a home game in general in the SEC is hell on the road team. I think it's really hard, man. It's hard. And I tell people all the time, I told our offensive line, that it's harder in the SEC to play on the road at, at, at offensive line tackle and some of those positions that are timing positions and snap count positions than it is in the NFL until playoff. Because I coached in the NFL. Coach Saban coached in the NFL. We talked about it all the time. The games are not, they're corporate. They're not, they're not the same type noise in the regular season. Now you get in the playoff, they catch something like that, but it's it's a it's a big advantage in terms of get off and it basically uh, highlights your run game because if you can run the ball on the road, you you protect so many uh, things from happening, bad things from happening. Yeah, you talk so much about being a player led team. Do you, do you notice anything different from player leadership coming off of the loss, or has, has it really just been business as usual for the past two or three days? No, there's been a, uh, I mean, I mean, there was no lack of sense of urgency prior, but there was, there's been a, uh, you know, a, a, a vocal piece of the leaders. They spoke up in meetings. They've, uh, they, they, they visually see it. You know, the, 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 they, they, they called out and said, hey, we need the greatest scout team work we've ever had. They went to the scout team and told them they want to get the best look they've ever had. I mean, the leaders are doing the right things. They're, 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 they're handling those things well, and, uh, and they're also owning up to to the mistakes they've made or how they played. If it hasn't been to their standard, they, they want to improve. So we have really good kids. It's not about the, the leadership factor. I think this, is, this team's got a lot of really, it's got kids that have been here for a long time. I mean, you talk about Tate and Nas and, and Carson and Trust, these guys have been in this program. Dylan, Jared, they got, they've just been here forever. Uh, Kirby, Dylan Sampson is having a record-breaking season for Tennessee at running back. Um, what stands out to you about him, and how do they do such a good job of getting him going in these games? They're they're stubborn, man. They they they're physical. They run. They, I mean, he is an elite runner. The runs they run are sometimes non-traditional. I mean, they run some runs that other people don't run because of the space in the box. He's very patient. He hits small creases. He, he he's hard to tackle. Uh, I mean, you don't put up how many touchdowns he's got in the SEC? Twenty something. I mean, that's crazy in the SEC. The SEC is the hardest league in the world to run the ball in on because they got the most size defense alignment. And he continues to do it at a you know, crazy pace to me. So what year is he, by the way? Yeah, I mean, he's he's as good. I mean, it seems like he's been there for a while, and I, you know, I know where he's from in Louisiana. They, they do nothing but, but but have great backs from there. He reminds me so much his run skill set of, of Kamara, of Alvin. He's very smooth and elusive. Coach talking about night games, it's gotten to be kind of a big deal, the third to fourth quarter transition at, at, uh, on these teams, even for you guys. Uh, first on Ole Miss last week, it, there was a lot of smoke left after that, and you guys were trying to run a play deep in your own territory. Did, did, did you say anything? Did that 
bother you and just can you talk about that what's going on in the league obviously texas you got they put on a huge show and it gets dark and i don't know whether it affects you but just your thoughts on that yeah that's just part of the entertainment i don't i don't know anything about it it, it, it did last week we had a play called and we were you know worried about that i mean it, we tried to wait i think lane was trying to get him to wait too because he was worried i mean we didn't want that to impact the game um but it was like nobody in the box could see the field and we could barely see on the field. It reminded me of like a fog bowl. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't, I mean, I don't know much about what goes on in that time. I'm, I'm so focused on the game that I don't, I don't really care either. You know, I don't want it to affect the, the vision, but I don't care about the, the what they do and the, the entertainment value of it. And uh, just hope we're competitive with what we do. <laughs> Folks, got a schedule type question for us. This is going to be the first home game in, I think, 30, 35 days for you guys. Mm -hmm. Tennessee played its first road game in about a month. And I know Auburn being in here had a home heavy schedule. Is this stuff that you would like to see the SEC maybe try a little, maybe a little better to kind of break this up so you, so you don't have to be at home all the time or on the road so much in the road? Yeah, I would like to have a rhythm to it. I do. I, I, I'm not also going to sit here and say that they probably didn't think about that. There's not a reason why it has to be that way. I know in our case, it's the Georgia-Florida game. Sure. You know, that, 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 that impacts every other year. You, you can't yeah. I mean, every year for us, but every other year it would have been in our backyard. So it makes you have to leave home and go. And that's always yeah. been one of the tough things is just at the end of the day, you're traveling more and you're getting back later, especially these TV times. And, uh, that can impact your recovery time and what you do on Sundays. But in a perfect world, you wouldn't go that long. I'm sure uh, Auburn feels that way. We felt that way, uh, I think it was last year. Um, we went a while before we went there and played. So, But I'm sure if you ask the SEC office, they'll have a reason for it. Going back to having gone so long without smile, how happy have you been with how your inside linebackers have played to this point in the year? Yeah, considering the age and, 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 and the experience level of those guys, they, they've done a good job. It's been by committee because Jalen really is kind of half inside, half outside. He does a lot of, he does a lot of everything. CJ and Raylan have really grown up. Uh, <clears throat> Raylan missed some time for us um, there where he, he was out and obviously smiles in his time. And it just seems like every year we're in the cycle of having to get freshmen ready to play really fast. And I think Schumann does a good job of that because Chris Cole and uh, – Justin Williams are going to be really good players. They're bright spots out there at practice each day. I mean, Justin is one of the hardest working, um, most positive kids I've ever been around. And uh, he and Chris are, are both getting better, faster. And uh, all those guys, are they, they got a great tight knit group. Uh, James Pierce, their, their uh, I guess, edge rusher, how, how does he compare to Presley? And then what kind of concerns do you have for the success he had last week? Yeah, he's similar. Um, he's uh, very elite get off quickness. Um, you know, they do different things with him. I mean, they, they put him on the center before, they put him on guards before, they twist him and stun him. Um, but he is, he's really good on the edge. And I'm sure watching last week's tape, that's probably where they're wanting, you know, he's on the edge and, and get off and the quickness. And, you know, you got to count for him every play. But the sad thing is, like, they got other players. He's not a one man team. They, their, 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 their inside guys are playing at a high level, rushing great. They got great quickness and get off. Um, they have several players from Georgia playing really good. Uh, they got guys playing on the edge really well. And the biggest difference in their team is probably their their, their secondary and their corners. Their, their corners are playing as good as any set of corners in our, our conference right now. There's another question, Coach. Yeah, just how's the offensive line practice so far this week? Well, they practice like they do every week. They're giving great effort, uh, great toughness. They're, they're, by, they're, they're, they're doing it by committee. We got guys injured left and right out there. So it's, uh, I mean, we're running a drill and there's no guard in there because we're out of guards. And then this guy's got to go in and take reps. This guy's got to bump over here. He's got to move out there. It's it's welcome to the SEC. So, uh, you know, the, those, the one thing about those guys, they're the toughest group on our team. And they are the most committed and uh, and want to do right and want to play well. Uh, it's tough sledding. It's tough sledding out there, especially when you're throwing the ball that much. It's hard to go block one-on-one -on -one and do those things. We have to help them with uh, protection, and we got to help them in the run game so they can come off the ball and hit people. All right, thank you.